Yeah, you're welcome. Mike, uh, Sean said a, a few minutes ago that he connected with Mason Rudolph last week by phone. What what kinds of things can he learn from previous quarterbacks you've had, Mason specifically, but just watching some other guys that you've had? I, I don't, you know, it depends on what they ask. You can learn a bunch of things. I think you can learn, one, um, you know, in which ways, how, how did you prepare? Um, and then I think you can try to relate um, you know, maybe some situations that they've been through and how they tried to overcome some adversity at the same time. Um, anything from that, from more of a philosophical standpoint, to, you know, how are you throwing left on a rhythm three throw? I, 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 it, it can be a multitude of topics and things discussed. So um, you can always learn, and, and the best way to learn is to ask questions and listen. So I'm, I'm glad that he reached out to Mason. Mason can, can tell him some valuable things, and I think any quarterback – especially a guy as humble as Mason, will probably learn something from Cliff as well. well this is big time Steelers country as well, especially west of here. Good. Uh, Mason, what, what would you, what do you make of Mason's uh, pro career so far? Some Steelers fans maybe have, might have already given up on him. Others say maybe he could have an opportunity after Ben. What would you say about Mason? I mean, it's really hard for me to tell. It, it looks like, you know, it, it, I think it's very difficult to judge anybody on a preseason game one. Uh, and then also, from what I saw in a very, very, you know, I'm like as knowledgeable as a general fan right now speaking about this. Um, and, and, and I just think that um, at times, you know, there's certain circumstances where you're deficient and, and um, as, a, as a whole unit or team. And sometimes a quarterback can just be a microcosm of that by example and and i don't know their situation at all uh, but i expect him to play tremendous moving forward he's a tremendous quarterback that's going to work really hard and um you know i think i think the world of the guy i think he's going to be a great nfl quarterback at the end of the day sean said you guys have had a chance to go out and golf together and you're a big golfer he said that he's a better chess player than he is a golfer but there's some people i guess that would say that you can learn a lot about somebody when you golf with them do you buy into that and i guess if you when you play with sean like what you learn anything about his, uh, his mental makeup at all on the links? I think you can. Um, you know, uh, on that particular day, uh, we were kind of scrambling, so it'd be better to get more of a one on one competition with him. And, no, no, no. and unfortunately, you know, the NCAA rules. Uh, you know, don't allow us to really compete at the highest level of golf, but uh, that'd be fun too. But that'll have to wait till till uh, a later date. Are you a the field? I'll be on the field. On the field? Do you always be like that? I've been on both. I've been up. I've been down. So why on the field here? Well, I think it's important um, from a leadership standpoint to be able to uh, rally the troops, uh, so to speak, and, and to be able to, to look Cliff in the eye and have a good conversation with him as well as clear communication with any adjustments that we need on the field, uh, to be able to talk to each personnel grouping, be able to talk to Coach Franklin. Um, I just think the, the communication is, is very critical. And at the same time, you have to have uh, good eyes up in the box and be able to trust them, which we do. I was going to say, who are your liaisons, so to speak, in the box be, and how important is it that that person you have pretty much think the same way? Again? Well, it, 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 it's critical um, that we have um, consistent information flowing from the box to the field. Um, and, and in the past, um, it, it's always been good as long as the information is uh, 100%. Uh, you do not want to transmit any communication if there's any uncertainty, uh, but when you have expert guys in there with years of experience, uh, those guys are used to seeing it, and when they say it's a particular movement or coverage or stunt or blitz, um, or alignment that you're trusting what they say. Have you had a preference throughout your career in terms of box or booth, or is it just? I prefer to field. You prefer the field? Okay. Is it harder or easier to call plays from one or the other? You have the bird's eye view up there, but on the well, field, if it you was have harder or easier on one way, I would err on that. But I had tremendous success on being up or down. Um, not to toot my own horn by any stretch of imagination, but um, it's been it's been fun, and, and I like both of them. You know, trusting the guys upstairs, but also seeing it from the ground when you're practicing or when you're scrimmaging. You know, those are those are thousands and thousands of reps, and you're calling it and you're seeing it from the field. So actually, when you're practicing, you've got more practice reps from the field than you do from up top. Can you expand on that value of being able to look your quarterback in the face? Well, the it's emotion, right? It's emotion, and players can feed off emotion. Um, you know, they can feed off your confidence, your positivity, how you communicate, and then when you can calm them down, when you need to spark them up. 
um, and those sorts of things. I think uh, just from an emotional standpoint, it can be a, a significant boost. But then also, you know, just from um, a standpoint of communicating, you know, adjustments and that sort of thing, it's more free flowing. And, and I think uh, sometimes in, in, in college football, you got to get guys on the, on the on the telephone or pass a headset to them. Um, it's it's less efficient in between series. Like maybe.